दादा एक चिकन चिली गार्लिक मंचूरियन सेजवान नूडल दे दो और एक चिकन बॉल चाइनीज तो आजकल कोई भी बना सकता है I mean, take this Chinese for example. It's naan ke vaste. There's no way you're going to eat this if you were to go to China today. But the fact of the matter is, the world's manufacturing hub makes everything, from copies of everything to the Apple iPhone. In fact, this guy, Chinese food dude, has a Micro Max smartphone. They were sourced from where else? China, and there are one big reason today why India is the smartphone capital of the world. So the question today is, can the revolt be a revolution as well? Well, the timing is certainly right, but there are so many questions. Is it Chinese? Is it Indian? Is it well made? Is all of its intelligence artificial? Screw it. Let's go ride it, shall we? This is the time to talk about the three kilowatt motor and things like the 156 kilometer range, which is ARAI certified at an average of 45 kilometers an hour, and therefore not very useful as a reference for the real world. Let's get under the RV400's skin. The structure of an electric motorcycle is not that different from a petrol engine motorcycle. If you look, you have a swing arm, disc brakes just like usual, a place to mount the pillion foot peg, a monoshock with preload adjustability, USD forks, another disc brake in the front. It's completely normal. But where it changes is in here, because that's where usually the motor goes. It's on the revolt and we've seen other electric bikes just mount the motor horizontally at the bottom. It drives the chain from the other side. In this case, it's the belt. That's how the final drive is. In here is the heaviest part of the motorcycle and that would be the battery. It's here because the center of gravity is roughly here. That's where you want the heaviest part of your motorcycle to be. But here is the thing. Let me just step out for a second and get you something special. This 19 kilo unit is the battery of the revolt. This is what goes inside and the guys say that in theory you can take this out, go home and charge it and put it back. I don't think I'm carrying 19 kilos of weight around just like that. I just don't think I'm going to do that. Revolt does have some interesting options, like the ability to order a battery to yourself, or mobile stations where you can swap your battery for a full one. But there are so many questions here as well. These mobile stations will probably run on diesel or CNG, and how eco-friendly is that? How do you ensure that the battery you get is as healthy as the battery you give? But one thing is for sure, the rain seems alright for light urban use and not much more than that. Given how small the battery is, charging times are a reasonable four and a half hours from a wall socket, less if you have a faster charger. I know what you want to know. You want to know, how does the Revolt feel like to ride? Now the ride quality is actually quite nice, we are at a track so I can't really tell you what's like in the real world but the handling is extremely impressive. It's only 108 kilos all told and that means it's quite light, it's very flickable, the brakes work really well, I wish there was ABS but the fact of the matter is at a go-kart track riding this for about 3 hours I had a lot of fun and I had so much fun that the battery range actually fell to 50%. But don't you worry too much about the range. This bike has something called artificial intelligence, remember? Well, that's what they said. What it has today is the ability to connect to the internet, to report data and to receive updates to its control software and mm, that's it. Revolt says that in time, once more user data is in the system, actual intelligence will show its hand. For the moment, swiping on your phone to start or stop a bike is not AI. It's cool, but it's a toy, not a real benefit. The Revolt RV400 did, all said and done, surprise me. It reminded me strongly of how much fun scooters are at go-kart tracks with the point-and-shoot mixing well with the grippy tyres, limited speeds and lots of quick direction changes. This the RV400 does well and it feels like a light compact motorcycle, which is what it is. It is roughly the size of a Honda Shine to be precise, but with scooter controls where both the levers work the brakes. There are issues though, it's not perfect. The throttle response from closed, for example, is troublesome. Merely touching either brake lever cuts the torque to zero, which makes progress less than smooth. On the flip side, the torque, especially in mode 3, is wonderful and it makes the RV400 satisfying to ride hard, though its range expectation falls to just 83 kilometers when you select it. I do wish that it had ABS instead of CBS, but I think that's a matter of pricing. 
The big question naturally is whether it is Chinese or not. Revolt told us that the frame does come from the Super Soco TS, the almost identical looking Chinese motorcycle. But this frame was further reinforced for tougher Indian conditions. The Super Soco TS also has the same tank design, meters and headlight as well as the bottom of the fairing. The RV400 has a different side panel, fender, hugger, tailpiece and bits. The big difference is that the Super Soco uses a hub motor from Bosch, whereas the RV400 uses a belt drive setup, which is probably more cost efficient. Overall quality felt adequate, neither too cheap nor outrageously expensive. The Revolt RV400s we rode today are first bad production and that means that these motorcycles do have a few glitches. But what Revolt is saying is that when the final bikes arrive in September, these glitches will be gone. But the fact of the matter is, this is a test track, not the real world, so we don't actually know how it will feel in the real world. And for that, we have to wait. Okay, wait, hang on. I have something very, very interesting to share with you, which is the price of this motorcycle and the price is MRP, my revolt plan. You walk into a showroom, you pay 4,000 rupees and you ride away on the motorcycle that gets registered to your name on day one in just 4,000 rupees because this is a subscription plan. You pay 4,000 rupees for the next three years every month. That equates to 1.44 lakh rupees and whether that's good value or not will come to later. What do you get in that? Everything else is free. Insurance costs are included in it. Uh, brake pad changes, tyre changes are included in it. I think just one tyre change though. Battery of course uh, comes with 1.5 lakh kilometre warranty. So once the three year period is over, what really happens is you stop paying the subscription. All you'll have to do is start paying for brake pads, tyre and uh, any battery service costs. That will happen after three years or after 1.5 lakh kilometre warranty that the battery comes with. What happens if you sell the motorcycle before the three year period is over? Well, the buyer starts paying the subscription amount like you were, so no hassle there either. What happens if you stop paying the subscription amount? Well, um, they have the ability to remotely switch the motorcycle off, so nothing really happens until you pay again and the motorcycle is functional. Remember, this is an electric motorcycle, so this is possible. I think there is no internal combustion engine motorcycle that will come to delivering value to this degree because 1.44 lakh rupees paid over a period of three years that includes just about everything which is insurance, pads, tires, etc. I think that's a very, very good deal. Future is electric.